Rhonda, why don't you give us 30 seconds about your thoughts about the film, which we saw first. Well, I think it's an extraordinary teaching tool. Yeah. I heard in Mississippi, I am, how the young people will teach us and tell us what is true. And getting children in Montgomery, Alabama and Cambridge, Massachusetts to tell their experience and what's real for them is really powerful. So Safe Schools, um, Welcoming Schools has a curriculum and toolkit for K through five schools and we can use resources like this. So I hope that you can connect us with your community. Does anybody have any questions yeah. for Rhonda about what do you know, six to 12 year olds? Yeah. I have a question. Yes. How did you choose Cambridge and um, Alabama? The question was, how did she choose Cambridge and Alabama? Um, the filmmaker, Ellen Brodsky, is from the Cambridge area, and I'm a regional consultant and live in Montgomery, Alabama. So we knew that we didn't want just Berkeley kids or children from the Northeast. We wanted a Southern voice too, so we chose people in my community and in the filmmaker's community. Other questions for Rhonda? Yes, sir, Chandler. <laughs> question was, were you surprised at the children's insight, and uh, can you comment on that? Well, we actually knew that kids had that kind of insight, and when we're working with schools trying to educate older people about what kids are experiencing and how sophisticated they are, we wanted to take kids in the classrooms with us but couldn't. So we, some of it surprised us, the really beauty of, of their experience and the 10 year old boy who said, Tom girl, you can't be a Tom girl. I'm 64 and I've never heard that term before. So we knew that kids are experiencing and knowing a lot. We knew that educators weren't taught how to educate and intervene but we didn't know, we were, were surprised at just how sophisticated they are. Thanks, Rhonda, appreciate it. All right, what questions do you have for Catherine Linton, the director and producer of Mississippi I Am? Yes, sir. How many film festivals, or do you know how many places where this film is being shown? Uh, this is a well. This is the second. Um, it, it premiered in Atlanta. Um, it's going to Tupelo next. Um, I'm waiting for the AFA. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they they kept photographing my license plate, but it was a rental, so they haven't found me yet. Yes, ma'am, Rhonda. <laughs> Um, I, I don't know how to get a copy yet. Um, we're working that out and uh, we don't have distribution yet. So um, I'll have to let you know. I'll put you on the list. I have a copy for you. There you go. Chandler, I think you had a question. No. Um, I was actually connected to um, Lance Bass. He was he had heard about the Constance McMillan case um, and had the reaction of, oh no, not Mississippi again. You know, um, how embarrassing this is. You know, they're shutting down the prom. Um, and so I have I've done gay and gay media for 20 years, um, and I had done um, the launch for Logo on the history of the media and the movement. So the uh, uh, head of logo had put me in contact with him and um, so we met and we didn't really know what we were doing you know I, I think his idea was n not to do the constant story necessarily but the Mississippi Safe Schools Coalition to, to to look at what was going on you know it seemed like something was happening something was changing 
Um, and so it, it, the film was filmed backwards. I don't know if you can tell, Izzy looks a little older towards the beginning than the end, you know, yeah. uh, filmed the prom first. So that's how we actually met some of the kids. Um, that was my first time in Mississippi um, ever. And, you know, I've traveled all over the country, like I said, doing gay and lesbian media um, since 1993. So um, it, was, it was an intense experience, you know, first, um, you know, we went to where Constance's high school, well, we got lost. And um, and it, we went to a gas station that was, looked like it was right out of deliverance to me. I mean, it was just this, you know, and I walked in and I was like, oh, if I had to buy a Coke, you know, I hope I can interview people here. And, um, and asked for directions to Constance's high school and everybody was so angry at that time. You know, there was so much media, there was just, so people were really shut down in Fulton. Nobody wanted to talk to anybody, and especially somebody like me. Um, so there was a whole group of older men sitting around and I told my cameraman, I said, why don't you, don't bring out the camera, wait for me. And of course he's such a, a wimpy straight man. He's like, oh, sh I'll, I'll stay in the car. And I was like, thanks man, <laughs> got my back. So, you know, I went over and I asked and I said, yes, I, I am from the media, but I'm doing a documentary. It was my very first um, approach to anyone in Mississippi. Um, and it's, you know, it's inspired by the constant story, but we're really looking at all sides of, of the gay experience. and and the reaction in Mississippi. And somebody said, um, one of the older gentlemen said, um, if somebody had taken a baseball bat to her head, this would have gone away a long time ago. So I said, well, that's an opinion. Do you want to talk to me? And he said, no, and he walked away. And then another gentleman stood up and it turned out it was Constance's grandfather, um, who, those, those were his lifelong friends that he had to hear this kind of stuff. So it was a very uh, intense, you know, and then some guy started saying, you know, I interviewed her grandfather and, he said, I wouldn't say what that man's saying. And he said, oh, you know, you're a lesbian. What are you doing here? And it was, you know, the first time I'm always, I mean, I have a lot of stories about feeling protected by the camera. And this was the first time I was like, I don't have a camera on me. And, you know, I was sort of, uh, I said, if you want to talk to me, you can talk to me on camera. Gave him my card. Um, but I realized, you know, I'm, I'm out of my element. Um, but it was, so that was our entree. And then the prom started and then all these kids came and it was an, 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 an amazing um, experience in meeting all, the, all those people. So we found, we found Pam by accident. Um, she picked up the phone. Pam Walsh of Safe Harbor, who's here. Congratulations. What an inspiration. And all the people from Safe Harbor. Um, she answered our call when we called to find, and so it was kind of circuitous and we had to kind of piece it together. It was a hard film to put together. I'll put it that way <laughs> in many ways. Mm. Uh, his question was, um, what's our, my perspective now after that fir very first sort of um, pleasant confrontation at the gas station, and um, I think uh, my my experience was that people are incredibly brave. Um, and you know, I, I come from I, I you know I'm, I'm from Manhattan, right? So I'm on an island. Uh, we we did a film for the human rights campaign, and we opened it with a scene from the boiler room where some straight guys were making fun of some gay guys, and they said, you know, the straight guys said, I wish they'd put you all on an island somewhere. And they said, they did, and you're on it, you know? So, yeah, and my church is a black, I have a black pastor and the associate pastor is an Asian gay man and a white lesbian, you know? It, I have the most diverse church you can imagine um, that I go to on Sunday. So, uh, you know, I think, I, think um, I was very bothered. There was somebody who wrote something about the lack of um, racial diversity in the film um, and, you know, I have uh, years and years and years of covering this community um, and, and, and every aspect. And um, I think the, the one thing I will say is that people who tell their stories on camera um, are incredibly brave, no matter where you are, you know, because you never know where this goes. You never know where this film will go. I don't know where it will go. Um, I was on television for nine years. I hosted In the Life, a national gay and lesbian television show. You know, my family had to, people would joke like, oh, Dave, your lesbian sister's in the paper today. He goes, yeah, that is my lesbian sister. You know, like somebody would be making a joke. Like your whole family knows, everybody knows, you know, when you, when you tell your story. Um, so 
for me, I was like, hell no. You know, if I were 16 and Audrey or, or 18, I would go to New York. I, I, I don't know that I would be that strong. So I am incredibly impressed with the people here. Um, and, you know, the critique of racial diversity, we all have work to do, all of us. <laughs> you know, we all have work to do in this community and in this country, you know, so I could, I could speak on and on about that, but um, it was, I, I've, I feel like uh, this was a tremendous um, honor to be here and to, to, I've learned a lot.